dear students our lecture is on the topic of contemporary approaches to linguistics approach means how do you analyze something how do you visualize something how do you see through something suppose approach is a lens and this is a lens through which you observe some linguistic or literary phenomena so there are different uh, approaches for example formalism functionalism behaviorism mentalism so we'll uh, have a brief overview of all these approaches formalism you look at the picture of uh, roman jacobson and he has he is called the uh, main proponent of formalism in linguistics formalism refers to a view that concerns itself with the form or appearance of an aspect of the world when it focuses on form or appearance so we call it formalism you can say formalism concentrates on form of something form of some phenomena form of the text form of the uh, linguistic uh, aspect this is sometimes viewed as an explanation interpretation or understanding based on the superficial rather than substantive aspects these approaches help us to interpret any linguistic or literary element so we explain things with the lens of formalism in which form is focused form is the primary aspect a formalist critic examines the form of the work as a whole though they observe uh, its parts but they take it as a whole the form of each individual part of the text the individual scenes and chapters the individual characters the setting the tone the point of the view the diction diction mean language uh, was language archaic new or the writer has uh, introduced uh, new words or coined new words as shakespeare has coined so many new words and all other elements of the text which join to make it a single text in formalism they take different aspects and in every aspect they focus on form and then with different uh, small forms they build a bigger ho holistic form or they derive holistic meaning from all different forms like forms of tone forms of uh, chapter forms of language uh, next uh, approach is functionalism uh, functionalism in language learning it has a different uh, proponents and uh, the most important one are john dewey whose picture has been given in the left corner george herbert mead harvey a carr and especially james roland angel were the main proponents of functionalism at the university of chicago usa functionalism is an approach to language development that focuses on the relationship between language form and social meaning the crux of functionalism is language form and its function in the society how does language perform its role and function in the society that is language is not so much a system of rules as posed by chomsky but a means of performing particular particular socially communicative functions functionalists they don't uh, focus on grammar or semantics or the other things but they focus on that which functions are performed by a language in which occasions or situations we use language and which purposes have been served to the language and how does language support human beings in their interactions 
and in their discussions. So uh, this is the pragmatic aspect and this is the uh, direct beneficial aspect for human beings that what is the function, what is the benefit of the language. Functionalism in linguistics, the approach to language study that is concerned with the functions performed by a language, primarily in terms of cognition, relating information, that how does language relate information, convey information, and expression, expression means how does language express mood of the speaker, mood of the writer? Every writer presents some mood, some narrative, some uh, mindset and wants to create certain effect on the minds of the reader or the listener. For example, Shakespearean tragedies, they create a tragic mood on the uh, listeners or on the readers. If you read uh, uh, Oedipus Rex by Sophocles, this is the perfect specimen of a tragedy that when a person reads it first time, the person starts weeping because of its uh, extreme intensity of tragedy. And cognition, language serves the purpose of cognition. Cognition means how does it exert influence Functionalism emphasizes the consensus and order that exist in the society. Focusing on social stability and shared public values, from this perspective, disorganization in the system, such as deviant behavior, leads to change because societal components must adjust to achieve stability. Okay. Functionalism perform the function of order, stability, arrangement, suitable arrangement of the society, suitable arrangement of the social values. So uh, this uh, function was maintained through the language. Suppose language has a phatic uh, function, phatic function, communion function that you are asking uh, that how do you do and its purpose is to have a good social relationship among members of the society. Next approach is a structural approach. approach. Ferdinand de Sachore, he his students compiled a book course in general linguistics. He was a professor in Geneva and uh, he used to teach uh, Gothic literature, uh, Sanskrit and uh, other elements and uh, uh, he gave the concept of uh, Lang and uh, Parole. Lang is a French word. It means uh, abstract uh, systematic rules. All those rules of a language and those rules are abstract, but they are systematic. All those rules are called land. Parole is practical aspect of language. When a person speaks or practices a language, that is called parole, that is speaking. So, uh, Ferdinand de Sachore, he mentioned uh, primarily two things, lang and parole. Though he also discussed uh, some other elements which you have studied earlier and uh, they were about uh, paradigmatic and uh, syntagmatic relationships, signifier and uh, signified concept. Signifier mean picture or uh, the word, suppose dog dog or the picture of dog, they are called signifier. Signified mean the concept of loyalty behind the word dog in western society. This is called signified. So when signifier and signified function together they make a sign. Okay. 
Our uh, next uh, approach is uh, behaviorism. In the corner, you look at the picture of uh, Skinner, B.F. Skinner. Uh, he is uh, the important figure in behaviorism. He talked about stimulus, response, and reinforcement. Stimulus means the situation which is created which makes uh, a person or a dog to act that thing frequently. Response, the reaction of the animal, bird, or human being in response to stimulus. Reinforcement means repetition of uh, that activity or that work. I'll uh, discuss with you the laboratory rat presses a lever and receives a pellet of food. The recipient of the pellet is a stimulus also called a reinforcement or reinforcing event. It increases the strength of response. The regular occurrence of reinforcing event will result in positive reinforcement. Now Skinner's operant conditioning has been presented here. First of all, look at uh, the box on the left hand side. There is a mouse. This is test subject. And there is a speaker. Then below it there are lights. Then there is a lever and dispenser. Increases likelihood of repeated behavior. Positive reinforcement. Mouse is given food when lever pressed after green light. Negative reinforcement. Loud noise stopped when lever pressed. Decreases likelihood of repeated behavior. Positive punishment. Mouse is shocked when lever pressed after red light. Negative punishment not applicable in this scenario. So in this way, this mouse was uh, taken into the operant conditioning uh, environment. And uh, this was done frequently that after uh, dozens of uh, practical tasks, the mouse has been able to follow that behavior which was required by its trainers. In the same way, uh, dogs are trained and other animals are trained and uh, they follow the same system. Behaviorism in language. Basically, Skinner and the others say when a person learns any linguistic uh, element frequently, listen and repeat, the person becomes expert in that uh, aspect. And the person produces that aspect uh, frequently. So, behaviorists teach language in a drill system that person learns and memorizes one small structure and practice, practices it many times and uh, then just uh, change one or two sentences, one or two uh, words and replace those words with new uh, words and uh, with this such repeated uh, practice human beings can learn foreign languages. This is the concept of Skinner. Okay, mentalism uh, you look at the picture of uh, Noam Chomsky and he belongs to the school of mentalist. Mentalist, as the word is self-explanatory, that it concentrates on mental abilities or a brain. So there is cognitive approach. Those abilities which are related with mind, brain, thoughts, neurons. Rene Descartes was a philosopher and he gave the idea that language is an innate phenomena that a person is born, every person is born with linguistic abilities. So when a baby is born, baby possesses all types of linguistic capabilities. And with the passage of time, those linguistic capabilities are expressed. In the beginning when the child weeps or babbling and cooing sounds are produced, basically they are also language. 
as uh, we buy a laptop or computer that computer is uh, fully functional and it has all its uh, systems uh, of uh, ms word uh, pdf and uh, window and all other systems but whatever you use that system starts functioning in the same way when a baby is born baby is programmed with language language is an innate uh, phenomena and language is present in the minds of uh, children so with the passage of time that the system establishes and produces a multifaceted type of sentence patterns islam has also taught allama adam al asma kullaha that god taught names to adam it means human beings were gifted with the qualities of language even before their birth okay another school of thought is or another linguistic approach is called linguistic relativity and this is called sopir work hypothesis the principle of linguistic relativity holds that the structure of a language affects its speakers Uh, on the right side you look at two persons edward sopir and benjamin leworth edward sopir is a teacher and benjamin leworth is his student sopir the world in which we live is to a large extent unconsciously built up on the language habits of the group sopir's view was expanded and explained by bohr popularly known as the sopir whorf hypothesis now we'll share their uh, strong version and uh, weak version the strong version says that language determines thought you will memorize this uh, phrase language determines thoughts that linguistic categories limit and determine cognitive categories they say if uh, a language is full of abusive terms harsh words so thoughts of people will also become harsh and negative if a language does not have any abusive term no or harsh word so human beings will also be polite and they will never speak any harsh word so the language determines thoughts or language shapes our thoughts its weak version is says that linguistic categories and usage only influence thought and decision basically this is the same controversy of hand first or egg first some says language determines thoughts and others say thoughts determine language thank you so much if you have any question please do ask